In this video, I'll introduce you to AI Canvas, Leonardo AI's image editor. AI Canvas is a feature-rich tool with numerous cool features. Let's dive right in. There are several ways to access AI Canvas in Leonardo. Let me explain them. Option 1. Click on AI Canvas in the left side navigation pane. Option 2. In the community images, select an image. Click on the three dots and choose Edit in AI Canvas. Option 3. In your personal feed, select an image. Then click on the three dots and choose Edit in AI Canvas. Option 4. After having generated an image, hover over the square shape and open it in AI Canvas. You can zoom in or out using the buttons in the upper right corner. There's a legend next to the zoom buttons explaining keyboard shortcuts for navigation. These are optional and depend on your preference and familiarity. On the right side, you'll find the settings panel similar to what you've used for image generation. At the bottom, there's a prompt field. You can also enable a negative prompt by clicking the setting symbol next to it. The Generate button is next to it, along with a token usage indicator. You can undo and redo actions using the buttons provided on the bottom left. On the far left, you'll find the Tool buttons. Hover over them to see what they do. The first button is for panning. It allows you to move around the canvas without affecting the image. Select lets you move and resize elements on the AI canvas. Changing the size of an image on AI canvas affects the dimensions of the downloaded image. However, resizing won't improve the image's resolution. You'd need to use upscaling techniques for that. Download image is a crucial button. Any changes you do in AI Canvas are not auto-saved, so use this button to download your image to your computer before leaving AI Canvas. The square in the middle is very important. Everything you do in AI Canvas happens within this square. You can change the size of the square on the right side. You can lock or unlock the square. When locked, it can't be moved. Once you pick the Select option, another settings box appears at the top, labeled Snap. Here you can define the pixel size that will control how precisely the square moves. The smaller the number, the more accurate it becomes. For instance, if I set it to 64 and attempt to move the square to a corner, you'll notice it doesn't perfectly align with the image. There's always a gap, no matter how many times I adjust it. However, if I set it to 8, the square will fit precisely with the image. Let's take this picture of a cute IT girl in the style of 3D animation. Before sending it to AI Canvas, I'll copy the prompt first. Now that I've copied the prompt, let's bring it over to AI Canvas. Paste the prompt at the bottom and begin extending the image. I want to expand the image from all sides, so I'll enlarge my square and place the original image in the middle. I'd like to use the 3D animation model for generation to ensure it fits with the rest of the image. Now, let's generate. I have a few options. I think I prefer this one, so I'll click on Accept. Let's go for another round. This time, I'll set the square to the largest possible option. It will take longer to generate, but it should provide me with some better options. So, I'll choose this one, which I like more. The more precise your prompt, the better the image Leonardo generates for you. Here's a comparison of the two images. 
Now, let's dive into in-painting. In the art world, in-painting is a conservation technique used to restore damaged or deteriorated artwork. It involves filling in areas of missing paint or other media to make the artwork appear complete and visually seamless. In Leonardo, you have two tools for in-painting, masking and erasing. Let's take our previous image of the Disney-like IT girl. I want to give her purple eyes without significantly altering their shape or contours. This is a perfect use case for masking. You can use the Draw Mask button on the toolbar to paint a mask over the areas of the image you want to modify or refine. When you activate the mask option, a slider appears at the top that allows you to control the thickness of the masking brush. Once you've masked an area, you can provide a prompt for the image. In my case, I used purple eyes. Let's generate. As you can see, the eyes are now purple, but their general shape hasn't changed much. To remove a mask, select the Select tool, choose the masked area, and press the Delete button on your keyboard. Now, you'll notice that my IT girl has these odd sleeves on her arms. I'd like to remove them and have her wear a sleeveless top. This is a perfect situation for the eraser tool. I'm choosing erasing over masking because I want a completely new image without any influence from these black bits on the top of her arms. Once I select the Erase tool, I can specify the thickness of my erasure. Now, let's remove the unwanted part and place the square over the area. For the prompt, I'll simply use Arm and hit Generate. The result isn't bad. Think I prefer this one. So I'll accept it and move on to the other arm, where I'll repeat the same process. Erase the part I don't want, position the square over the area where I want a new image generated, and click on Generate. This time, the AI generated a sleeve for me, probably because it didn't have much of a naked arm as a reference to work with. So I'll need to be more precise with my prompt, I'll cancel, change the prompt to sleeveless arm and generate. That's much better. Of course, you can repeat this process as many times as you like using the eraser or masking tool until you're satisfied with your image. And once you're done, don't forget to download it. Otherwise, all your changes will be lost. Let's explore some examples of how you can use in-painting and out-painting to transform your images. One application is blending images together. Here you see two separate images I generated earlier. Both depict an imaginary secret garden. And I want to blend them so they appear as one image. The first step is to remove the areas I want to blend, because there's a stark contrast between them. On the left, there's all the greenery, while the right image features a bright blue sky. So, the images don't naturally fit together. By removing these areas, I'm helping the AI find a smooth transition between the images. Next, I need to place the square over the middle section here. I have to increase its size to make it fit. For the prompt, I'll write a colorful jungle with green trees and bright flowers. Now let's hit Generate. It presents me with four options, and I think options three and four look best, but I'll go with option three. 
This is my final image and I must say the AI did an excellent job. Let's consider another scenario. Suppose I want to place a unicorn into my imaginary secret garden. I have two options. Option 1. I can use an image I've already generated. So I'll go into my personal feed and look for the unicorn image I generated previously. As you can see, my unicorn has a bright background that won't fit into my secret garden. So I have to erase that first. Next, I'll make my unicorn smaller and position it in my secret garden. Now, let's provide a prompt. I almost forgot to place my square over the unicorn. Let's do that now. When I hit generate, the AI renders my unicorn into the image. When I download the image, the unicorn is seamlessly integrated except for the space between its legs, which I didn't erase earlier. Option 2. You can generate an object directly into your image. For instance, let's say I want to add a rainbow to my imaginary garden. First, I'll erase the part where I envision my rainbow. Next, I'll position the square around that area. Then, I need to provide a prompt. I want to use the Dream Shaper model, so I'll select that. As you can see, the AI generates a rainbow in the sky, blending it with the rest of the image. You might have noticed the option on the right called Canvas Mode. Currently it's set to In Paint Out Paint, which is the default we've been working with so far. However, there are three other options. Text to Image and Image to Image work exactly the same as in the Image Generator. The same goes for Control Net. I won't go into too much detail about how to use them. I'll just show you an example. Let's start with text to image. The reason you might want to generate an image in AI Canvas is that you can immediately adjust it after generating it using out painting, in painting or even image to image. Now, let's generate an image of a wizard. For the model, I'm choosing Leonardo Diffusion which produces high contrast, dark looking images. Say I like the shape of my crystal ball, but I find it too blurry. I want to generate an image for the crystal ball with higher resolution. I'll use image to image for this. I will triple the render density to increase the crystal ball's resolution. Let's generate... The AI generates four different crystal balls. If I put the image I chose side by side with the original crystal ball, you can see how it has increased the level of detail in the image. Sketch to image is actually pretty cool. You can transform a drawing or sketch into a beautiful image. I'd like to draw a mustache on this young man, so I'll switch to sketch to image. You'll notice a pen symbol here under tools. This is my sketch pen and I can choose a color and thickness. Let's draw the moustache. My prompt reads moustache. 
Once I generate, it proposes four different suggestions of impressive mustaches. I'll choose this one here. Of course, you can also sketch directly on the canvas without using any image. Here, I'm trying to sketch a banana. For the model, I'm choosing 3D animation. The AI will generate a banana based on my sketch, without any background. AI Canvas is a powerful tool that allows you to enhance your images in Leonardo. If you've missed some of Leonardo's other features, you can find more information in my other videos. I'll provide a link in the description. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time!